Jimmy, Arnie, it's been a while. It has, hasn't it? It has, mate. Um, but today I've been I've had an entertaining day. Uh, three there. interviews. Uh, yeah. And one of the kids I've just spoke to, uh, Lee Wheeler. Very exciting prospect. Very exciting. Well, very good fire. Yeah, yeah. And now Jimmy's been a regular with you, what, eight months is it or something? Or? Yeah, June, July time. It's really long, isn't it? <laughs> And the first fight coming up, you got a date? Yeah, 3rd of April, I'm on uh, the Ultimate Boxer uh, on BT Sport. Um, so I'm like chief support for the uh, for the event. So that means you're a TV slot then, eh, mate? Yeah, so I think they've got the semis, and then they've got uh, obviously the break, so we've ever been in the last semi gets a, gets a bit of a break for the final, so I've got a, a good TV slot there. So you know, I, was, I was supposed to be on a, you know, Morris Corr and Mike's Contend a VIP show, but you know, uh, I got the offer to be on get a good TV slot, so I went with that. Yeah, it'd be silly to turn that down, wouldn't you? It's, so, yeah, it's the exposure cool. that you want, and yeah. also you, you need, I suppose, because you've been unfortunate, haven't you, mate? I would say unfortunate, everything like everything happens for a reason, and you know, I, I was probably unlucky to not get a decision when I fought Australia, and it's just like we spoke before that, you know. Dennis Holman then gone on to fight for the world title. Two world titles? Yeah, well, virtually beat one gear, but didn't get a decision in, in Mexico. And then he moved to middleweight and fought Charles. So, you know, I'm just keeping my down and just been ticking away. You know, not been, I'm not been out there talking rubbish now. I've just been do, coming in, doing my work, and, you know, my me, me, uh, me mental will start building this year. You know, I'm out in, on the 3rd of April. I've got a good slot, so I'll see what they, they come with after that. You've been around for such a long time, people probably think you're old, but 27, 27 to be yeah. in the position that you're in, you're still young. Of course it is, very young. Very young. Yeah, very young for that. To be like, at the height you'd be in, usually you get to the, like, your fourth world titles and all this stuff when you're 30 or late, late 20s. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's, feeling, he's feeling really good and he's, he's like, he's like a, a teenager, he's so fit and, and he's so fit and powerful and strong. You know, in the gym. And the is is this me. move up to middleweight? Do you think it's something that you perhaps should have done mm. even before you did do it? If you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. But I think to be fair, like Lee Bates said for years, like you shouldn't move up to middleweight. So when you when you train and you and you're like a good twelve and a half stone, so you're a monster. When you come down and you make weight, so you, you, even though you you put the weight back on, so you're a different fighter. You just don't. And it's after the Rick fight, he said like, you know, he, he, he wasn't the same fighter there that he, he were in training. And he, and he said it and, you know, maybe I just mentally or I would want to keep the weight down for, oh, but I'm a big, I'm big like middle and I've got to keep it here. So maybe I should have listened, you know, but then, you know, as time's gone on and I've just grown um, and I do, I feel, I feel better that I can keep my weight. Well, the decision was made after the Dennis Hogan fight. Yeah, that's when you said, like, well, this is it, I'm, yeah. I'm going up to middleweight. Um, now you've been, you know, like training at this for a while. I just came in there, and I, I don't know where you are now. I said, but you look huge. Yeah, I'm close to 13 stones or something now, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not fat. You look in good shape as well. I mean, I'm thick, it's just big arm, big shoulders. So I've just let myself grow. It's been, it's been good that I've had a, a little bit of time where I've not been as active, but I've been in the gym, I've not been out and ruined myself, been in the gym every day for the last eight months. So I, I've, I've been training this way good. And like I said, the, the Dennis Logan fight for, obviously there's a number of things like me, I had a brain scan issue yeah. the week of the fight, but even making weight, which is a fucking nightmare, you get what I mean? And um, I never, I don't think I fully recovered from that. Like, and I was surprised that I'd done as well as I did do, those through all the distance. And I, I felt like I finished a stronger, fight like the last few rounds, I think that's when I put my foot down after a bit of a, like a lazy spell in the middle. Um, but I think after that it was definitely the time. But I think you can take something from that, the fact like you say, everything, the preparation with the brain and all that was, was, was a nightmare, not what you wanted to go in. Was it two hours before the fight? Yeah, well, I, had me, I had my hand wraps and just the fight still wasn't wasn't okay. We had to wait, wait for Robert Smith obviously to get the report from the the brain surgeon who was British from the Commonwealth Games. I got that and that. I didn't have yeah, because the Commonwealth Games were being held over there and the brain surgeon was actually over there with the team, wasn't he? Yeah, he was there with Team GB, so we had to pay for him to come and see us, sorted out by the MIP, MIP obviously, like, sorted out, so I found him. Um, I had to see him 
on about three o'clock of the day of the fight, you know what I mean? I'm sat in the hospital all day waiting for him to give us the okay. He wrote a report and then it was like, I'm on the pads and the fight's not even there. So even the port where the show we've seen, I was driving to uh, I was driving to the fight and getting my speech ready to fucking tell everyone why it's not gone ahead. And he just kept nipping in and out of the changing rooms. And then obviously when the fight got okayed about an hour and a half, I might just get my bands on that thinking, it's not even gonna happen this, but I'll go through the motions anyway. And when the fight's like, yeah, it's on. I like, just pick yourself up then. I was gonna say, I presume that's why you probably finished strong because you must have gone into that fight so flat so, you know, it would have probably took you about four or five rounds just to get yourself going again because this was something that perhaps wasn't going to happen. You know? I think even like, uh, I was tired like physically, uh, obviously from making weight and that, but the, the mental tiredness as well, like I had, Play, you know, yeah, my missus was apart. pregnant with a, like baby number two and she, like, she went in early labour as well. Like, and I'm on the other side of the world, I've got fucking everything on top of you, you know what I mean? And I remember like, <laughs> after the fight, I just fucking went home and I had like the deepest little, went to that to your apartment, and I'm like a deep sleep, and I just felt like drained for a good few weeks, not until yeah. I got myself back round and that. But like I said, it's all a good experience. I've, I've, I've had my back against the wall in a situation like that. Um, and, you know, I've just been keeping me down training. And I'm looking forward to the, the 3rd of April, I'm getting busy this year. And how are you finding it working with Arnie then? The prick in it, but I still put my hand. That's what we get on. We get on like. Do you like, like this? Because when you were working with Lee, uh, Lee was very bringing new things into the game. But coming back with Arnie, it's very old school, isn't it? Is it is it nice to to be able to take a little bit from what Lee gave you, yeah, Lee, and now what what uh, Arnie's Lee's bringing good, to you? Lee's a good technical coach, and, and I think the thing that I, I always said about Arnie, which is good, like nothing's like reprimanded. Like if, if I'm in the gym and. I do something that, and it works. You know, let me do it. You know what I mean? Mm. So I feel better if my feet are like here, even if it's not textbook. I go, oh yeah, it fucking works, mint that. And like, I'm allowed to just like express myself a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Lee is, a, Lee is a very good trainer, and I, I learned a lot of fucking good stuff. Off well, that's what I'm saying. Yes, it's, that's a good thing about you know getting older in this sport and moving around from place to place. You can take something from each trainer, each coach, and each gym, even that you go sparring at. I presume you'll pick things up from the coaches that are, yeah. that are happening there. It's, there's not, I, I wouldn't say there's not one, say trainer or coach, well, who's, who is right for everyone. You can, you can be like, yeah. say, all your knowledge, you can be a manual steward, you can be can Terry Atlas, whoever, but you might not be suited to that. You might not like mm -hmm. really get on in a certain way where you no, know, like we can talk to each other and you understand each other. Um, because once you know boxing, you know boxing, you and you can you can you can have things. But if that guy who you, who don't believe in you, if he don't believe in you, that guy who you train him, yeah, not gonna work. But if you if they've got your like the same mentality as you and they believe what you're telling them is right and they're they're happy in so the gym. So basically what you're saying there is you're telling me that Jimmy's mad as well then aren't you? Oh yeah. Well all boxes are, all boxes are mad. No, all boxes are oh, mad. Uh, why would you box? <laughs> You've got to be. But uh, no, if you believe it's right what your trainer is telling you and stuff, because you can't. I've had when I've had trainers when I was boxing. I have had little doubts in mind, but I've, I never, I never said them to them. Like they told me something, and I thought, is that right? Though? I just said, yeah, yeah, okay, just do what they said. You know what I mean? Well, well, let's go forward. We've got this fight on the. Is it the fourth of April then? At the point, third of April is it? Third at the. Uh, Ice oh, it's a uh, ultimate match ring, isn't it? The yeah. point is the, the contender. Um, uh, like I say, great tournament. Uh, obviously on BT Sports, so that'll be profile again. What are you hoping then before the end of the year? Just keep busy. I think the, the main thing that I want to do before focusing too far ahead is just get busy. Like I've had one fight in two years, really, and mm -hmm. I've, it's been frustrating. So you know, I've had fights that I fall through, like the fight with Rob Brant and that, like that was supposed to be a fight that I was. I that was over in America, wasn't it? Yeah, that was supposed to be. Is that deal still signed with those? Because that's what was going to happen. Just waiting, with them. just waiting to see what happens with them. Yeah. But obviously, in the meantime, like, I, the the fight with Luke Blackledge came up, and I thought that's a decent fight for me to like. Former Commonwealth champion. Yeah, and I, it, 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 it's, it's fought fucking Callum Smith, and he's been over to like Germany for a he? lot of good. Yeah, a lot of good fights. So so that's a decent fight for me. I, 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 I just need to get busy again and that's the thing.
But uh, yeah, back to what you were saying before about trainers, like when I speak at Paul and Van Lager, we called for a last up my boxer, and he was saying about when he was with Buddy McGirt, and he said the same thing. He said there's some stuff that he didn't, that he tried to show that I didn't get, but because he was like training with the year and all this thing, like I was in awe of it. But so I went back to like a trainer that wasn't as prestigious as that, and we got on, and he said, and what I learned, like, if a trainer shows me something, you've got to, you know, you've got to show me that it works. Mm -hmm. I wanted to scrutinise it about If you believe it, yeah. Yeah. He said, yeah, like, make me believe it, you've got to show me. You, know. you told me, uh, when I interviewed you quite a few years ago now, is it's not what you've done, it's what these amateur coaches have done. And you oh, get, yeah. a, not the finished product, but you got a well skewed product awesome. that comes into your gym. You get a good foundation. Well, yeah. But do you think that's going to be a major factor now? Because since 2016, we've now got amateur coaches bringing their guys through. And we see them move fairly quickly. You know, look at uh, Jack Cullen with uh, Tommy Battle, you know. Uh, well, he's, he's done great with him, so, you know, he's brought him from like day one and he's, he knows him and he's happy with him. So he's done, they've done great together. Um, it swings and roundabouts. You can. Some people are happy with staying there. Um, some people are in a rut. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, everyone's different. So it's all part of a journey. Yeah, and of course sometimes it is. you need to go forward before. Of course it is. And find your way. Right. Well, listen. Good luck for the um, fourth. Is, did you say third? Third. Keep yeah, getting it wrong, don't I, mate? I'm sorry. That's age now. <laughs> punches it punch in it. <laughs> well, listen, uh, good luck for them, like I say. Hopefully, uh, you'll soon be back on that big stage and uh, fighting for major titles again. Perfectly, thank you. Nice Bye, Jimmy. See you later, mate. Cheers. Bye. Nice.